Yes. Hello, my name is Frank Latino. And I'm a product manager at Festo for our Ethernet IP products. And uh, this video is going to show my attempt on, on um, to determine how easy it will be to, to install a module within a CPX API rack system. So in this example right now, I am online with the CPX API. And you see here there are five slots. So slot one, module one is the Ethernet adapter. And here we have module two is a, is a valve terminal, VAEM. And module three is an eight digital input module. Module four is an analog input module. And module five is an IO link module. This module is currently running right now. My attempt will be to insert a four digital in, four digital out in between slot one and two. And the idea is to determine how difficult or easy that will be. Uh, this manifold right now is running in the Logics software. So I, I have this configuration set up with a uh, very simple program. The, um, this was set up by using the L5X uh, export function using nested data types. So basically using the default settings of the latest firmware, and this is firmware version 1.3.50 of the Ethernet IP adapter. And the idea here is that the, uh, to use the nested data types and after inserting a module and with very simple um, editing to uh, to be performed on the data type uh, that this will uh, allow one to insert a module into the system and make some very simple changes to avoid changing the um, tag names for all of the modules that uh, physically would get shifted in the API system. So again, pointing back to the logic software, the system is running. You can see the valves. I have uh, three valves that are on. And you can notice the uh, tag name that was created uh, calls out module two, coil zero, coil one, and coil two. And I have an SDAT that uh, is attached to the IO link mass, uh, master. You can see the data is fluctuating here. So the SDAT is working. And this is mapped to the input side, module five, port two for the SDAT. Hi, this is Frank Latino again, and this is uh, part two of a two part series on how to insert module with the CPX uh, API system. Uh, so from the, um, so if you see here in, in, in this version now, uh, there's a module that was added in slot number two. This is a four digital in, four digital out module. And this was added before all the other modules uh, in, in the system. So um, as you can see here, okay, there's a mismatch in the sort of parameters that's expected now because the, um, the, the, the controller size and, and the uh, parameter size is going to be different because of the additional module. If I go to Logics Designer, of course, you're going to see that the, uh, the system is now faulted because of the I.O. size is different. So what we want to do is now that we have a module inserted be before other modules, we want to make sure that the output addresses and the input addresses of the, all, all the uh, subsequent modules uh, remain the same. So no one has to go back in and reprogram the addresses of all the modules. Um, uh, so uh, their addresses don't get shifted. OK. so. How we're going to do this now, once this is all um, entered in here with the new module, the user will go to Ethernet IP, export the project again. The most critical step here is that the name is going to be exactly the same as it was before. So in this case here, this shall be insert uh, underscore test underscore one. Uh, capital I, capital T. Uh, everything else is um, uh, they're going to remain the same. You see, we have a nested uh, data types will be included, um, and we'll select all the same other uh, uh, values for uh, the co configuration assembly and the status assembly. And 
the user will simply submit this and download uh, this file. Okay, so um, now this has been downloaded. I've already done this in advance and I've opened up this file and I opened up a few things just to take a look at what the differences are with this new file uh, versus the previous one. So if I look at the ethernet module, for example, you'll see different sizes here. Now the input size, the output size, actually uh, configuration and uh, status are all increased to, rep to reflect the new module. Um, if we look at the different UDTs here, you will also see here that the, um, let's take a look at the uh, input module, for example, has now this new module two, and it's pointing to a 4DI, 4DO module. And the same would be true for the status and the output module. Here is, a, again, the modules uh, number two is a 4DI, 4DO. So typically when you do this export, um, the you know, procedure is to copy this module over into your working project and then go to the main routine and select these rungs and export them and then import them into your project. We're pretty much gonna repeat that same um, procedure with one exception right now. We're going to do a little modification on these three user-defined data types, the ones for inputs, outputs, and status. So taking a look at the output one, since this is a module that I entered in, module two, I'm going to rename this for the moment, module X. And I'm going to come to this module three, and I'm going to reassign this back to number two, which was the original number that it was before. And with the IO link module, I'm going to do the same. Now I'm going to come back here to the X, and I'm going to make that module six in this case. So I can apply this, hit OK. I'm going to do this now also for the, the next uh, two modules. Uh, next to uh, 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 um, UDTs, for example, this was the input one. Which again, I'm going to make this an X just so I don't have two modules with the same uh, with the same name. This four becomes three. This five becomes four, and this six becomes five. And now I can go back to the X and make this six. I didn't name, rename the descriptions here. Uh, so the descriptions still have um, the uh, old module numbers. Um, I would recommend to do that also, but for uh, time considerations, I'm going to skip that portion of this and hit OK. And then um, the final one here would be, uh, I don't need to do this right now would need to be the inputs and so, uh, I'm sorry, the status. So the same thing with the status, um, I will make this X. It should become two, three, four, five, and we'll make X six and hit OK. Okay, so now these three data types have been modified and that should cause, um, the that, that should allow for the existing uh, uh, values or the existing tag names for the modules that were previously uh, you know, beyond uh, number two or two and, and above, uh, those values should be the same. And now uh, the new module, module six, will uh, be a, a, its own unique uh, set of addresses. So, th so this case, we won't in interfere with the addresses that already existed. So, as I mentioned before, the procedure here would be to copy this module. Now I could go to this 
running program uh, where you've again seen that this was up faulted. So I am going to go offline, uh, delete this module, and now paste the new one in with the new IO sizes that it has. And then I am going to come back to this newly created module here or um, project. And I am going to look at the main routine and now just select these three rungs and export the rungs. And I could replace this one that I had before. And sometimes this takes some time. Um, it looks like it's working right now. And it should end in a few seconds. Maybe more than a few seconds. There we go. And now I'm going to go into the working project that I have here with my rungs that are uh, for the logic, the simple logic that I have. And I'm just going to select, come anywhere in here. And now I'm going to say import rungs. And now I have to go and find that file um, that I had. Hold on, please. Okay, this is the project that was just created. I could look at the date and the time and know the other confidence. That's, that's it. I will open this up. And now this is a very important step. When the tag names are ready to come in, you must pay attention to uh, this import configuration page. And what we're going to do here is go to tags and look at uh, everywhere where um, there is a uh, discrepancy. See here the tag already exists in the project and has differences. And uh, these are just, uh, these just have uh, the, the tags are in the project only, but where they are, the, where the differences are, we're going to select overwrite. Overwrite and overwrite. And now in the data types, and this is very critical. Again, we have these areas here that the data type already exists in the project and has differences. Again, we must select here, overwrite, overwrite, overwrite. Um, these actually don't really matter. We can use the existing one because these are the data types, uh, data structures for individual modules that uh, they don't change. So we're going to be good in this case. So we're going to make sure we select overwrite to these three um, data structures. These are the ones that we edited and also to the tag names that uh, I looked at before. So now we're going to say, okay. And I will continue with the import. Yes. Okay, so uh, with that import, I, if I scan through here so far, there are no errors. I, I do need to uh, delete some of the, um, the the duplicate rungs. So I'm going to do that right now. This, this is an input one. And I will delete. There should be a duplicate status one. That's over here. I'm going to delete that. And very important, this uh, output one here has a new size now, which is 44. I'm going to drag this down to the bottom of my simple project. And I'm going to make sure that I delete the rung that was from the old project that had 40 bytes of output data. So now I have 44. Um, so basically, the project is the same with uh, these two rungs for the uh, input and the status uh, uh, data types. I have my very simple logic and then I have my output data types. Um, you could also see here at this point, if I do a check, I have no errors. And so what's happening now, you can see is that 
since there are no errors, um, these um, tag names are recognized now as and they're exactly the same. So there should be no reason to change any uh, any of the tag names that had a, actually had a physical address that was shifted, but logically in the project, they are still the same. I will save this project. Um, I will also put in uh, just a unique number here. I'll put number six. It's, it's the sixth module that was added just so I can save this. Now I'm going to download this project to the controller. This might take a few seconds also. And then we go back into run mode. So I heard the valve click on. You see my CPX API is running. Um, all these valves are on. If I look at my SDAT, the, the data is changing, so that is working. So um, now also, if I go to the controller tags and I want to look at my outputs, I will turn on these outputs. So these are the outputs of the new module that I just entered. And these, um, um, mo these outputs are now on. So I was just able to insert a uh, module uh, in between other modules. I did not affect the addresses of the previous uh, modules. And I was able to now, I'm able to now program to this new module that is now reside in the system. So thank you for uh, listening. And um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us at Festo. Thank you.